I think what's really easy for me to go back to is, you know, when the XP was first launched, May 30th, today, 2019, was one of the most memorable and impactful days. And it kind of just started this chain reaction and this snowball effect that never stopped. So, you know, one of our best partners that we had worked with was this uh, a YouTuber group called Fate Unbound. They do uh, RV content and whatever. They got a couple XPs. They posted a video showing people the bikes. And Robbie and I, for the last six months, had just been eating all the uh, failure you could possibly do. Like, we just could not get the company going and all that. We just were really struggling. And we had the LX, and then we come out with the XP. That first video drops, and it just changed everything. And it's just like by far the most memorable, exciting day. We sold like 30 bikes that day, but it felt like a gazillion because we, oh man, we were running all over the place. So to me, that is just by far a, a memory I'm forever going to cherish and so appreciative to have. Right. Yeah. It's almost like when you go into a restaurant and you see that $1 bill that's just like stapled yeah. to the wall, like that's their first sale sort of thing. So I can totally imagine what that's like to yeah. like see that video go live and then, oh, there's one sale, yeah. two, three, and then all the way up. The funny thing is, is we didn't even have a bank account yet because we were so <laughs> unsuccessful. Oh, so we were processing these credit cards and like they were just sitting in the ether of some credit card <laughs> processing platform. And uh, then we were like, oh, we should probably create a bank account now. So yeah. I guess this is real. That was the sign of uh, the first you know, step that electric was a business <laughs> yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, <laughs> um, totally. Uh, but Rob, so you, you've kind of been there through everything as well. So I'm sure you remember that day very vividly, but is there anything that like sticks out to you in these past four years of electric? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, right after that first video went live, I mean, I think what was... <laughs> So shocking about that was like the phone was never ringing ever before that first day, right? We were never getting emails. We were, you know, I remember Levi and I were literally driving out sometimes up to an hour, hour and a half to potential customers' houses because that's how desperate we were to sell one bike. We were out at trade shows, flea markets, the home and garden show here in Phoenix, and we just had the darndest time selling even one bike up to that point. So it was like all of the sudden, you know, that video goes live and now, you know, I'm in my apartment, I've got my two roommates in there and I'm up bright and early because the phone starts ringing and I can barely keep up. And in those early days, I mean, it was literally Levi, myself and Levi's dad, Brent, we're the only customer service people. So we're frantically just trying to keep up, just be able to answer people's questions. And it quickly turned into, Okay, well, we're working seven days a week because, you know, right from the get-go, uh, Brent came from a customer service background and really instilled in Levi and myself the importance of taking care of the customer and the customer first mentality. And so, literally, the first video goes live and, you know, we're like, all right, it's Saturday, thank God, day off. I mean, that was a crazy week. That was awesome, right? And then the phone keeps ringing and you're like, oh man, dang, I know what I have to do. I have to take care of these customers, right? So we're working seven days a week and it quickly turned into, oh my gosh, like we're having a hard time keeping up and, and Brent is in Minnesota, we're in Arizona. And so he's getting up bright and early, starting to reply to people right away in the morning. We're staying up later at night. So we have, you know, borderline 24 hour coverage. We think we're doing a pretty decent job, but then, you know, the momentum kept building as more and more influencers posted their videos well june 7th remember that day we yeah sold 100 bikes in a day and it was a, it was mind-boggling and like the amount of calls and emails you and i fielded that day and you were out of town and like oh days like that so sick yeah it was nuts and that's we, we realized pretty quickly that we were going to need a little bit of help. And that's that's where Abby comes in, where it was like Abby was actually electric employee number one. Yeah. Um, and Abby, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about, you know, your experience oh, yeah. in getting involved. I, I think we just called you out of the blue one day we randomly. We like, really did. Yeah. So I was at home back in Minnesota. Levi calls me up and says, hey, I need some help. My company's starting to take off. Do you mind answering some emails, you know? What can we do? That led to where we are now. But the early days was 
They were like, seven days a week, you can do that, right? So That's that fine. Funny thing <laughs> is we literally had Abby working seven days a week. Because oh, we were like, if we're working seven days a week, <laughs> that means you do. are also. Yeah. And uh, you did it for that whole summer. So, uh, yeah, good for you for being in your early 20s, sacrificing a summer I like that. I can make it work. <laughs> yeah, and I know, like, all you at home are probably thinking, like, why would she even do that? Well, a little side note here is Abby is Levi's sister-in-law. So, so she wasn't allowed to say I no. I couldn't say yeah. no. There yeah. no. So, so early days of electric, like, they could not hire anyone from outside. It had to either be friends or family because yeah. no one would commit to the standards that they were requesting. No. no, we were completely nuts. And, like, also it was just, like, such a... Like, our Rolodeck was, we didn't know people. <laughs> you know, all we knew was our friends and family. And so when it came time to hire, you know, you go to those people that you know and you're familiar with. But, you know, it, it works out so well because, like, those are the people that are really going to be there for you also. Like, they're, they're willing to kind of put up with a lot of the extra crud that comes along with it, the seven days a week type right. of stuff, the long nights. And so um, I think it, it wouldn't have been able to get to this scale and have such amazing early success if there weren't people like Abby or you that made the extremely early jump to join Electric. Like, you know, I brought you on and then I said, by the way, we don't have an office, so we would like to rent your garage for $300 a month. And for some reason, you said yes. So, yeah. like, that was incredible. Like, hey, yeah. You know, it, it helped pay with rent, you know. Like, <laughs> oh, I was, like, telling my roommates, like, guys, I got us a discount. You know, we're going to be working from our, ho our home for a little bit. But I think one of the, the funniest stories that I always look back on is, uh, is me and Ryan um, starting at, like, the same time. Yep. And we didn't get paid for the first three weeks. Oh, you <laughs> because, never let that go. <laughs> because we didn't you know guys we didn't have the bank account <laughs> set up. Yeah. But, you know, hey, we, we trusted your word. <laughs> We're like, you know what, they'll we eventually did pay us. <laughs> Sure enough, they did. So, yeah. mom, if you're watching, I'm, I'm being paid. So don't worry about this. But, but those are just some of those days where we just look back on it. It's just like, I can't believe like we did that. No. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, and it's just like some of those heavy lifts and whatever where it was like shipping out the first 200 bikes. That was like a milestone. Like, that was like a huge thing. We got our first container. We had to ship them out. And it was just so chaotic and whatever. And nowadays, we can ship, you know, a couple thousand in a day and, and be just fine. But it's just, like, really cool to see how far the company has gone, but still appreciate the significance of that one simple container getting out there to those first 200 customers because, like, that's what creates the snowball. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, so. Yeah, and that kind of leads into, like, our next segment that we're going to talk about a little bit. But first, I just want to say again, if you are wanting to win an e-bike, please leave a comment down below. Um, we're giving out two e-bikes on this live stream, so we're super excited for that because, like Levi says, once we get bikes out there, it's a snowball effect. Yeah. You're going to want to tell your mom, your dad, your aunt, your uncle, your cousin, your second cousin, all your <laughs> friends. Um, it's just it's awesome what e-bikes can do and uh, kind of the community that it creates. Um, but I just kind of wanted to toss it back to you, Levi, because you kind of mentioned some things that you wanted to address um, before we hopped on that live stream of just kind of some electric updates and stuff like that. Sure. So. Yeah, no, it's an incredibly exciting time here at Electric right now. I, I see in the chat actually people talking about uh, from Alex, you know, the hydraulic brakes, which was like a really huge win for Electric. And I would say the industry as a whole, you know, that is a premium component that really hasn't been brought down to any bike below fourteen or fifteen hundred dollars before. You know, the most affordable e-bike that has it right now is the electric expedition. And so then, you know, we wanted to make our best product, you know, or the flagship model to have the very best of electric. And, you know, we listen to our customers so much. Like there's constant feedback. We're huge lurkers where we are on the Facebook forums, on Reddit, and we just consume all the information we possibly can. And some of the feedback was, you know, the bike is amazing, but I don't love the brakes. I just go to my bike shop and get hydraulic brakes. It's worth the money. It's like, I don't want you to have to do that. Like, I want to be able to deliver something that has you a static and you don't even have to make that decision. So, you know, a couple months ago, we started this project of like, 
all right, how are, who are we gonna do this? How are we gonna bring this premium component all the way down? But we've been really fortunate with just the growth of Electric to be able to continue to offset some of these heavy investments. Although it's still a, an investment that we've made and increased cost, you know, it's going to deliver a better bike to the customers and it's just like, I don't, it, that, it, at the end of the day, it was the right dec decision and it necessarily wasn't easy, but it's just, we felt it in our gut where it's like, let's make this the best bike. This is Electric's flagship, but it's also the industry's flagship model. It is the most popular e-bike model in the United States. Of all EVs in the US, it's the Tesla Model 3, Tesla Model Y, and then the Electric XP in terms of volume of a product. You gotta take that with a serious amount of responsibility and put pr constant pressure on yourself to improve it. So I think it's a huge win for it. Obviously it creates a really you know, hectic thing uh, for us right now. Um, it's created so much additional demand for us where you know, sales are as high as they've really ever been in the history. Um, and we're kind of just getting this constant growth. So it, it creates uh, new opportunities, new challenges all at the same time because there's just so much demand and excitement around this uh, change that you know, I, uh, I'm rapidly ramping up the customer service team. I think within the next 30 days, our customer service team is gonna be about 30% bigger than where it is today. So, because um, we get the people, but we gotta train them, ramp them up and everything like that. But I will apologize to everyone. I am aware that there's you know, longer than normal uh, hold times. You know, Electric holds ourselves to a very high standard in terms of customer experience and getting back to people quickly. Um, and my full expectation is to get right back to it, uh, that level of performance as soon as possible. It's, uh, it's cool. It's, it's an interesting thing that's going on because it's like all this demand and excitement and, and we're selling bikes like crazy, um, but we still want to be really mindful of like, how did we get here today? And it's by doing the right thing and treating customers with the utmost you know, care and, and ensuring it's a positive experience from consideration to all the way through warranty and beyond. So um, yeah, it, it's cool. But you know what's really been all awesome lately is just we're finally getting those trikes out. We've been shipping trikes like crazy the last couple of weeks. We've sent, I think, well over 5,000 trikes so far. And within the next two to three weeks, every outstanding trike will be fulfilled and we'll probably be getting close to in stock in the next two to three weeks which is a huge win, um, but it's a good warning to people because once it goes to in stock, the uh, pre-order um, promo with it, with the free cargo pack will be going away and everything like that. But um, I don't know, it's a really exciting time for electric, um, but you gotta keep the focus on what's truly important. Yeah, yeah, no, those are, those are great updates and I'm sure all you guys at home are Loving to hear that trikes are being sent. We even joked about, you know, changing our name to Electric E Trikes <laughs> with, with the amount of volume of, of trikes that we've uh, been selling. But um, another thing that uh, you didn't mention about the 3.0 uh, is that we're also upgrading uh, the programming into it as well, which I think is going to be a huge upgrade to the, the 3.0 because it was a fun bike. Now we're adding better brakes, which. Yeah. You know, that's going to be an awesome upgrade on top of it. And then even better, we're making the program better. The, um, yeah, the PWR power system, it's it's the programming of Electric's future, I think is a fair way to describe it, right? It's just, it's it's such an improvement. And it's just like, we had discussions, like, do we delay this until 4.0 or, or whatever? And it's like, if we can do it now, let's do it now. And for all those customers that are already out there, they can send their controllers in, we'll reprogram them for them. They're gonna have access to the program as well. Um, but it's just like, you know, the XP is a really sick bike. So it's just like, let's make it as awesome as possible and never really settle with it. Yeah, yeah, and I, I wanna kinda go to Rob real quick on this. And I know we've explained the electric power system before to our customers, but I just kinda wanna give it back to you and just, you know, go and explain it to the customers what exactly this new programming is. Sure, yeah, I'll try, I'll try to be concise because it, it's pretty complicated what goes on behind the scenes. But uh, PWR stands for Pedal Assist Wattage Regulation. And so essentially what we're doing uh, with the PWR system is... It, 
speed limiting each pedal assist level. We're power limiting each pedal assist level. And so right now, you know, pedal assist one takes you up to, let's say, five miles an hour. Pedal assist two takes you up to seven, so on and so forth through the pedal assist levels. Now you can think about it with PWR as um, more so, you know, levels of power assistance. So maybe on pedal assist level one, it's like you've got your mom or your dad behind you, you know, giving you a little push on your back as you're starting out. And then level two, a little bit of a stronger push and so on and so forth up through level five. And that's probably the best way to describe it. And in addition to, you know, the power, be the power delivery being more smooth, the takeoff being more smooth, you know, you have more control over the experience. You also get this added benefit of this efficiency gain, right? Because when you're trying to, to maintain a speed, your current's kind of going up and down and doing this and that. And if you go up a hill, you know, the power demand really ramps up, right? But with the PWR system, you have, you know, really precise control over how much you're asking of the bike at any given moment. Um, and so you get this, this range benefit as well from the PWR system. So yeah, I'm super excited about it. Um, you know, kudos to, to my whole team for, uh, you know, coming up with that, that system and putting in the long hours to, to get that done. Yeah, and we're, we're already seeing the PWR on the trike and yeah. on the Expedition. So to have the, the 3.0 on there is awesome. Which again, by the way, we're doing a giveaway. We're giving out two e-bikes today. So if you are interested in winning a free e-bike, yes, I said free, uh, <laughs> comment down below. Uh, we have a team that's scrolling through comments right now and we'll be picking a winner at the end of this live. Um, but to kind of, um, move on here I, th I thought let's go let's hop into some comments let's answer some questions let's see what people are chatting about uh, mark is already you know he, he's seen the trike he's seen the expedition but he wants to know what's next dude <laughs> is there anything that you could share of what electric could possibly be thinking of i would say you know we have uh have had a lot of really great product launches here and a lot of excitement so we're going to stay dialed in on uh, those things right now fulfill all the trike orders, um, but I think, well, you see it. Well, and so like Christian was talking about, where anybody that kind of goes into the showroom probably has seen Abby right up there, and um, you know it's their feedback that whether it's through customer service or comments or whatever. But I think there's been no shortage of people that went up to Abby's desk. Uh, in the showroom and was like, w where's the trike? When are you guys gonna do that? And eventually, if they bother Abby enough, they end up bothering us enough, and then we're like, all right, shoot, let's go <laughs> and get working on a trike. Um, so it's all customer feedback that drives product innovation. And so, you know, we carefully monitor all of it, and uh, I'll kind of just leave it at that, but what people are asking for is probably already in development, yeah. so. So, Mark, that is your, your PR a, answer right there. That's the best you're gonna get out of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we answered the question, but also at the same time, you're Did just not. gonna have to wait to see it, so. Um, so stay tuned on that. And then, um, again, just throwing it out there, we're giving out an e-bike, comment, ask those questions. Um, sort of thing. Yeah. And then um, one thing, you know, I think is worth talking about is like we have four years under our belt now. You know, what's really exciting to me is we have really good footing here uh, and an amazing community that it's completely attainable for us to add a zero to it and then to add another zero, right? What's the next 40 years? What's the next 400 years of electric look like? Where this is a you know, we've chosen to do business the right way and try to do our best by the customers and create a really incredible product at a, at a very fair value and, and price. But, you know, we, we just have never given up on that hunger. And it's really because of our customers. Our customers just feed right back to us and kind of give us that inspiration constantly. We're like, we don't get to this point over 300,000 e-bikes in a record setting amount of time. It, it had never been done at this speed before. You know, we now sell the most amount of e-bikes of anybody in this space by a pretty significant margin ever since the 3.0 launch. And so it's just like, it's so special and cool to, to do that, but it's really the customer because we like to, you know, have things be affordable and we can't blow money on marketing like crazy, right? And it's the word of mouth 
and just the support we've over the last four years with this insane level of growth we can tell you just about every way not to run a company and how not to run an e-bike company because we we've, we've tripped up and done all those failures and our customers and community have been so supportive of us along the way and helped guide us whether it's how what should the 2.0 look like or making the step through making the trike like they guide that product development but also how we interact with our customers and how we treat them and you know they push us incredibly hard and it's with great care and admiration we try to live up to what they're expecting of us you know they they took a bet on us in the early days of electric it was just robbie myself my old man you guys couple other friends like and and we were supporting this massive amount of demand and they showed such patience and grace when we were shipping out our first couple hundred bikes and then it came our first couple thousand and it's just it's so cool and special to have a community like this and as long as we don't ever shift away from that priority of the customer customer experience that drives our product development it drives how we interact with them and the standards we set on ourselves you know we've been shown in these last four years you keep that as a focus and the customer is going to build this community around it and they are going to support you all the way through and i'm just i'm so grateful and appreciative of that and i know us four and the team back there and everything, you know, takes that with a, a lot of pressure and responsibility, but it's awesome. So uh, I think totally attainable for us to start adding some zeros to the legacy of electric, so long as we keep doing things the right way. Yeah, yeah, and it seems like we, you know, we're gonna stay true to who we are and we're always gonna be quick to listen, for yeah, sure. Totally. So if you guys ever have any ideas of how to make an e-bike better, what, you know, you wanna see electric do, please, feel free to share it, whether it's, you know, talking to us in our showroom, phone calls, emails, any sort of feedback. Facebook groups, Reddit, we are everywhere. We are you know, everywhere. We don't have much hobbies beyond this, so <laughs> we just lurk and we read and we try to learn. Yeah, and you know what's funny too is like, uh, we're even on the comment sections of influencer videos and, oh, we're yeah. and a ton of influencers are being like, oh, you guys should do this, you should do that. And yeah. so it's, it's cool that like, we're not just listening to one source, we're listening to every single sort of content that's revolving around electric. Yeah. Um, and so then that's kind of one of the reasons why we switch from mechanical to hydraulic brakes. Totally. And, and it's, you, anyone who is getting a 3.0, you're gonna see a huge upgrade um, with the hydraulic brakes. That's yeah. gonna make it way, way better. Rob, you just kind of want to hit on like why hydraulic so much more awesome and why it's traditionally more expensive too. <laughs> Sure, yeah, I mean, you know, mechanical disc brakes are are also fantastic. You know, let's not <clears throat> take too much away from mechanical sure, disc totally. brakes, right? Because we've had them on our, our products for many years. They work great. But the advantage you have with the hydraulic brakes over the mechanical brakes is, um, you know, instead of, you know, you pulling your brake lever, which pulls a cable, which actu actuates the brakes, hydraulic basically means there's fluid in that brake line, right? So you get... Um, a lot more control over how much stopping force you're applying uh, when you pull those brake levers because it's fluid actuated. And actually you're, you know, to get into maybe a, a technical detail there, the, the mechanical brakes we have, you're actually only actuating one brake pad when you're, when you're using those mechanical brakes and you're deflecting the rotor into that other brake pad, so you're 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 only stopping with with one of the brake pads, right? The hydraulic brakes, you're actually actuating both brake pads, and so you're getting you know better contact, better stopping stopping power from those hydraulic brakes. So it's it's one of those things where you can describe all the technical details and and you can you know throw these words around, but it's really I always say it: seeing is believing, or in our case, riding is believing, right? Yeah. So I think that. Customers who come in the showroom or customers who have ridden bikes, uh, other bikes out there with hydraulic brakes, maybe you've ridden an Expedition and a 3.0. Expedition already has the hydraulics. 3.0 up until now had the, the mechanical. You feel the difference in the, in the levers. You feel the difference in the stopping power. I'm super excited for everyone on this one. Yeah, yeah and, and I think it's really cool that we're offering the hydraulic brakes to existing customers as well. For the 3.0 customers, you know, okay. there's 45,000 of them out there. Um, and it seemed 
like a no-brainer type of thing. It's an expensive decision, no doubt about it, just sending everybody these um, kits free of charge for those 3.0 customers. But we just didn't want to delay this move and wait until 4.0 came out. And so it, it seemed like the right thing to do. And we often just kind of go with our instincts and guts, and it told us to offer it retroactively for those that want it. And yeah, yeah we're, we're super jacked about it. Yeah. Yeah, we're always going to try to do our best to do what's right for the customer. So, totally. So, um, so with that, we um, have to have some winners to select. Dude, so um, sick. I'm going to actually toss this one hold to up, Abby here. Hold up. There's a birthday in the chat. I don't know if there's, you saw the comment, but no. there's, we got to do a 50th birth, uh, happy birthday. Well, it's actually a belated birthday to Chica from the Chi on YouTube. And that is probably that's the Chica from the Shy. OK, well, <laughs> you know, as in, yeah, as in Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. That was going to be my second guess. Anyway, happy fiftieth birthday! Hope it was awesome. Hope you got to shred on a bike. That's the best way to celebrate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, <laughs> with that, we're gonna just, we're gonna give away some bikes. So Abby, please. Yes. Tell us who the winners are. Our winner from the YouTube channel is gonna be Andy Crandall, Whoa. and we've got Mixer from our Facebook comments. Wow. There we go. So, Andy, yeah, hey, <laughs> reach out to us on social media, email or phone. Um, call us. You know, we want to make sure you get taken care of. Um, and then we're uh, got to get, you know, your shipping information and get those bikes out to you. Um, also, um, just another happy National E-Bike Day. Yeah. Happy fourth anniversary to Electric. Um, we're super excited that we have another year under our belt and um, looking forward to what uh, the fifth year is going to look like. And uh, yeah. we're going to continue to do our best and try to shatter the records. Uh, yeah. At the point, we're kind of competing with ourselves right now. So totally. uh, <laughs> just, again, happy National E-Bike to all of you guys out there. Send us a picture, tag us, you know, hashtag National E-Bike. Uh, day and you know we'll see it we'll repost it all that stuff so. I, I think actually we're gonna be giving away two more bikes to people who post and oh. use the hashtag on social media even better so yeah. we're giving two e-bikes away for this live stream already gave those away we're looking <laughs> to give away two more if you use the hashtag national e-bike day so sick so, so four sick. total bikes are being given away wow. for the four-year anniversary. That's such a marketing thing. <laughs> this is, I wish man, I you guys that. are burning my inventory. I'm trying to ship bikes out, and you just keep giving them away. Yeah, so again, do that, post, tag us, hashtag, all that stuff, and we'll, we'll be giving out two more e-bikes. But that kind of ends our, our live stream. Do you guys have any final words here? My big thing is, like, yeah, four years down, you know, a lot more to go, and, I, and I'm in firm belief that Electric's best years are still in front of us because we've learned so much in these early years due to the help and support and community of Electric that I just find myself so excited and bullish about the future of what does the future electric e-bike products look like? What does this company look like? And the community that goes all around it. So it's just has me extremely excited about the future and I feel so fortunate that um, you know, we're able to be sitting here today because uh, it couldn't have been done without our customers. So thank you to everyone that had helped us uh, through all this and uh, you know, this probably isn't the end of us needing your support and help, and we're, we're, we're going to take as much as you're willing to give us. So thank you to everyone for uh, joining this live stream, but also just the support that you've given us. So, yeah, happy ridings on National E-Bike Day. Get yeah. out there and go shred. Yeah, I better myself. See you guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, love it.